We're here on Maundy Thursday to review what happened on that sacred day. On that day with a lot of uneasiness that was going on with Christ and his disciples. But before we do that, I want to go over a little bit of what I remember about preparing the service for Maundy Thursday. Maundy Thursdays of the past, the lights of the sanctuary were always dimmed and the candles were aglow. The music was soft and subdued. The congregation spoke in soft, low tones. We sang, sang songs that were somber, almost sad and reverent. Songs such as Tis Midnight in Olive's Brow. Tis Midnight on Olive's Brow, the stars dimmed that lightly, lately shone. Tis Midnight in the Garden now, the suffering Savior prays alone. Tis Midnight and from all removed, the Savior wrestles alone with fears. Even that disciple who he loved heeds not his master's grief and tears. Tis midnight, and for others' guilt, the man of sorrow weeps in blood. Yet he hath in anguish knelt, is not forsaken by his God. Tis midnight, and from heavenly plains is born a song that angels know. Unheard by mortals are the strains that sweetly soothe the Savior's woe. So we have a lot of songs that express the dire need that Jesus had of, of just having people around him that he loved, especially his disciples. So our hymns reflect Jesus' ordeal that he had to face alone. Let's review several actions that took place on Monday, Thursday, that fateful 24 hour period. My resources are from Matthew 26, Mark 14, Luke 22, and John 13 through 18. Even though they're similar, there are some subtle differences, especially in the book of John. How do we fit into this Thursday before the resurrection? One of the things that we're talk, talking about tonight, describing the scriptures, important for us today. Why are they important for us today? Or are they? As I present to you some of the things that we find in, Scott, in the Gospels, I ask you to interject yourself into the stories. Become one of the disciples at the table. What were your responses to be to Jesus? This is probably one of the most important things in the history of Christendom or the history all along. Jesus met with his disciples to celebrate his last Passover with them as a human being. The Passover meal had been prepared when Jesus sent Peter and John to, to the city to find a place to have, his, have the last supper he entered the upper room and was all prepared for him to be there with them. So let's talk about what Maundy really means. In Latin, it's the word mandatum, which means commandment. So we see one of the things that Jesus did for the disciples was give them a commandment. One of the things Jesus did on this commandment, he said, love one another as I have loved you so much love one another. Now this wasn't a suggestion, it was a commandment. If they were to be the messengers of God and Jesus, they were to always show love to those they were engaging, to those that they were trying to present Jesus to. On a darker side, Jesus let the disciples know that they would probably be deserters after tonight after he was betrayed. And as the night began, Jesus knew the person that was going to betray him, who was one of the 12, and it was Judas. He announced that to the group. And they got a little concerned, said, oh, who is, who is this? Who is, who is going to betray you, Lord? Another thing that he heard was Jesus announced early in the meal that there would be one of the 12 
that we betrayed him, just as we said. Another one that he presented to the disciples that some took offense to was that he prepared himself to wash the disciples' feet. Peter had a problem with that, didn't he? He had a, he had a big problem with it. He even argued with Jesus for a bit. And Jesus said, Peter, if you don't let me do this, then you, are not be, you will not be with me. And we know what the reason was for that. Another thing that Jesus did is he gifted us with the institution of communion, the Lord's Supper. He had suppers with them before as he broke bread and drank wine, but this is a very important one. This is the last one that he will have with his disciples until the kingdom of God comes. Jesus broke the bread and poured the wine and offered them to the disciples, instructing them to do this in remembrance of me. Do we do that on Communion Sunday or is it just for granted sometimes that we look at this and so it's just something else in the service? I'm afraid that we do that sometimes and we need to rethink the whole purpose of what the communion is. After the meal was served and after all the things had been done, they sang a song and then they proceeded to the Mount of Olives. He asked Peter, James, and John to go with him to the mount and to be guarded as he went up to the Garden of Gethsemane, he actually knelt down, prayed to God the Father. He went with a sorrowful heart, anxious and concerned about what was gonna happen that night. So he did ask his father, he prayed to him, says, if this cup can be removed from me, please do otherwise let your will be done. And we know the results of that. But he came down to, to the mountain and three times and asked them, why are you asleep? Why aren't you in on guard? Because my time is almost done. The betrayer will be here. And he told Peter on one of the uh, occasions that, Peter, you will deny me three times before the cock crows. And Peter said, Lord, I won't. Well, do we not deny Christ sometimes? What he also did on that mountain, he prayed for himself, he prayed for his disciples, and he prayed for us. Read John 13 through 18, and you will see a better picture of that. Peter was so upset about Jesus being betrayed by Judas after Judas kissed him on the cheek and said, Rabbi. And because he really didn't respect him or understand him that he was actually the Messiah. He was a teacher. So he kissed him on the cheek, received his change and left. Peter was so upset that he actually cut the ear off of Malchus's ear, who happened to be the chief priest servant. But what did Jesus do? Jesus picked it up and healed it for him. Even though Jesus was distraught and sorrowful as he proceeded, an angel appeared to him and he gave comfort. There are many more things that took place during that fateful Thursday. Many of them were there of a sermon, but all in all, one that kind of sticks out in my mind is that the disciples still did not have a clue of what was about to transpire when Jesus was taken prisoner. They wouldn't know that until the resurrection on, East, on Sun, Easter Sunday. Do we see him as the Messiah? Of course we do. So I ask you to think about these things as we continue in this service. Ask yourself, where is my place 
on this fateful Thursday, on this Monday Thursday, on this Holy Thursday. May God continue to bless us <clears throat> as we find ways to minister to his people. Forgive us when we fail to respond to your call with faith. Through your spirit, we stand in the assurance of your acceptance. Forgive us when we are shackled by our narrow understanding of discipleship and our clouded sense of purpose. Through your spirit, we are drawn into the illumination of your empowering love. Forgive us when we're frightened of the future or pulled back from the demand of your calling. Through your spirit, we will trust you to lead us into new opportunities. Forgive us when we fail to sense your presence in our past, to acknowledge your grace in the present movement, and to trust you for our future. Through your spirit, we offer ourselves in discipleship. We stand together as your disciples. We seek renewed and renewing faith. Touch us now with your spirit, Lord. Touch us now with your spirit. We'd like for you to join us for our scripture tonight. It comes from Psalms 100. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Thank you.
pray with me. Our God and our Father, we come before you on this special occasion, honored to be your children and your servants. We are thankful for your son, Jesus Christ, and that he was willing to come to earth to teach us and to die for our sins. As we enter into this sacred service in which we are reminded that he washed his disciples' feet as a symbol of being a servant, that we too are to be willing to serve our fellow man and to share your love with them. Amen. Lay your hands gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands gently. Lay your hands. You were sent to free the brokenhearted. You were sent to give sight to the blind. You desire to heal all our illnesses. Lay your hands, gently lay your hands. Lay your Gently upon us, 
Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. Lay your hands, gently lay your hands. Lord, we come to you through one another. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead, and write them on the doorposts of your home and on your gates. These six verses may well be the most quoted portion of the entire Bible. Known as the Shema, they are recited every morning and every evening by Orthodox Jews and have been for hundreds of years. They graphically emphasize the importance of God's laws to the Israelites. The Shema is a recognition of a covenant of God's intervention on Israel's behalf against the Pharaoh of Egypt. The Shema starts with a confession that there is one true God and that this God must be loved with all your heart, soul, and strength. From Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 20 through 22. When your children ask you in time to come, what is the meaning of the decrees and the statutes and the ordinances that the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your children, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, but the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. The Lord displayed before our eyes great and awesome signs and wonders against Egypt, against Pharaoh, and all of his household. This reading explains why the Shema is important. It is a reminder of the Passover when God passed over the houses of the Israelites, when the firstborn of all the Egyptians were destroyed. It is a remembrance for the children of Israel of their deliverance out of Egypt and slavery. The Passover meal follows a fairly standard pattern in the Jewish household. In response to a question from the youngest member of the family, the story of the first Passover is recounted. From the book of Matthew, verse 26, chapter 26, verse 20, and 26 through 29 adapted. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus and his disciples met as a family to eat Passover, the Passover meal together. 
Jesus thought of himself as the Passover lamb, offered up for the deliverance of his people. The bread was his body, which was to be given, and the wine was his blood, which was to be spilled. The Passover was transformed into the Lord's Supper. At the Exodus, the nation of Israel was born. By Christ's sacrifice, the church was born, which would become a people drawn from all nations. Until he comes again, we are to remember the significance of what he has done for us. Eternal God, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread and wine to the souls of all those who receive them, that they may eat and drink in remembrance of the body and blood of your Son. They witness to you, O God, that they are willing to take upon them the name of your Son, and always remember him and keep the commandments which he has given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. Take and eat. This is my body.
Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink the fruit of this vine again until I can drink with you when we are renewed in God's kingdom. During this Lenten season, may we prepare as Jesus did for our sacred mission. May the outcome be that we see a tomb that is open and empty, thus knowing that we live in a post-resurrection time. See Easter not as a Sabbath to remember, but a truth to live. Become Easter people who are ordinary people who encounter the struggles of life, but who do what Jesus did. Know that you are called to be individuals of power and authority because you commune with a resurrected Christ, a community of Christ. Demonstrate then that as an Easter people, the impossible becomes possible because of a resurrected Christ. Realize that dedication to such a cause is expensive, but is a profitable investment, and that such sacrifice becomes a stepping stone to living celestial lives. Thus, your efforts can become a pleasure. May you comprehend that you're not being asked to throw your lives away, but to discover yourselves through ministering to others then hear God's call to the intelligent laying down of your lives with skill. We all are sent forth to be the Easter people of the resurrected Son. Even so, amen. Tis midnight and dawn all is bright. song that angels 
Whoa.